Armin with Armin Hammer TV. Uh, Noah, you've been to the CrossFit Games a bunch. Actually, a lot of you are veterans here. Um, congratulations on making it to the top 10 in the final day of the competition. Thank you. How does it feel to see a lot of really well-known, popular athletes sort of fall to the cuts? And what type of like emotional toll do you think that a lot of the athletes are sort of feeling having to go through that? I mean, you guys obviously aren't going through that, but yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I totally understand. It's it's actually very bittersweet. I feel like I'm a pretty empathetic person, so to watch the cuts go down and see some of your friends be removed from the competition, I know how difficult that would be for me, and so I kind of feel for them, and it's a, a bit heavy when that's going down, but again, I'm happy to have made the cut and moved on myself. Uh, Will was in and Dave at the end. Uh, are you convinced you have the top 10 best crossfitters in the world? Yeah, absolutely. These guys proved it over a number of events. He just said something about well-known, popular athletes not making a cut. This event isn't about total Instagram followers. This event is about the fucking fittest in the world. And that's what these guys have proven. They've stepped up to the challenge and they've gone through all the tests that we presented them and we have the appropriate people representing for the top 10. They are the best. Hi, uh, Jessica Danger with Morning Chalk Up. Um, Matt, my question is for you. How did it feel to get the event win off of the barbell? Please. Fucking amazing. Ben Harvest from Wadadi. Uh, Brooke Wells, this is a question for you. You've been a very consistent athlete at the highest level from a very young age. What kind of advice do you have to somebody who's just starting that journey and failing out? Um, age doesn't matter. That's pretty much like the biggest thing I can say. Um, it doesn't matter how old you are, it just depends on how hard you're willing to work. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, I'm Lauren from Atlanta. I'm wondering what you do and take to recover from a day like this. Noah. Um, I am lucky enough, I actually signed with a supplement company called Evertrain. It's a good little plug right there, but I've been taking their pre and post workout throughout the competition. I just took some protein now, hopefully that helps with muscle recovery, and eat a whole bunch of good food. Uh, that's about it, yeah, in terms of fueling. Hey Dave, Grant with Down on the Box. Could you just speak to how you were able to test the strength of the athletes before cutting the field to 10? Uh, great to watch the competition today. I was just curious about that. Strength was tested for sure in the first event. That snatch wasn't easy for a lot of people. And that snatch, even for the best guys in the world, isn't light. It's medium weight. You have to be strong to be able to cycle that. That nobody touched in go. They all did singles. So even though that wasn't in the traditional sense heavy, you still had to be very strong to perform that workout and perform it fast, that test. The strong guys were able to move through that fast and bank the points for later events. Also stuff like the sled, again, it's not heavy, but with strength and the strength that you apply to it with your fitness, being able to drive it faster, you were able to build places. So even though things weren't heavy leading up, we tested the appropriate amount of strength that we needed to at that point. And that 50 pound rucksack, that wasn't light, especially at that point. So I'm, I'm fine with the, with the level of strength that we tested and how we got to this point. And what I care more about seeing is the fittest displaying their strength rather than the strongest getting to show their strength, but they also lack flexibility, um, fitness at the same time. And so we flip the switch. We got the fittest, and then they can show their strength. Stop it. We're gonna take a question from the crowd. Thank you. Um, 
This question is uh, just for all the athletes out there. You know, we've seen a lot of craziness over this uh, competition. I think that the factor of uncertainty has been the biggest this year than any year prior. What are you anticipating going into tomorrow, and how are you preparing uh, both physically and mentally for what's about to come down? Uh, my name is uh, Brian, and uh, this uh, question can go to any of the athletes, just how you're preparing. Um, I'll take this one. Um, I think the coolest part about the CrossFit Games is how unknown it is, and all year we train not knowing what we're training for, so it's everything and anything. And Dave this year kept it under wraps more than ever. We get to know an event one event at a time, which is super cool. Um, I think we all kind of know that we might get a swim tomorrow, so that's kind of what I have in my head. But besides that, it's just um, folks I'm recovering, showing up tomorrow, and then have some fun. This is, this is Annabelle from Villarreal. I would like to ask Brooke, by, by the end of the sprint event, you were very emotional. What was really happening? Were you confused with the score or? Um, I mean, considering that that event, I knew if I took the penalty that I was going to be cut from the field. I just wanted to make sure that I deserved the penalty. And I mean, it's a good mistake. And um, yeah, it was just, it was a hard pill to swallow and just know that stepping on a line took me out of the rest of the game just because it wasn't like a performance based. We do view it as a performance-based mistake, and that's why we had that rule in place, because there were every other athlete who didn't get that penalty had to focus on cutting before that line and making that hard cut and turning it, and that's how we reaped it, and that's, how, that's why we had the penalty, because you had to do your due diligence to make sure you really cut, turn, and cross the finish line. I wasn't trying to make a thing at you all. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, uh, I'm Anna with Audio on TV. Matt, this is the first time in a few years that you've gone to Sunday without the leaders jersey. What is your mindset coming into a day like this? Um, <laughs> not really any different than any other year. I'm still going to try to win every event. I'm willing to drop dead out on the floor. I'm going to give it everything. You know, uh, the second event today, um, you know, I was like, huh? you, you know, it's kind of like, there's no pressure on me. It's like, oh, I can either roll the dice and, and win an event, and it's great, or, you know, an event goes to shit, and I stay where I am. So I, I've got nothing to lose, so I'm just pushing all the chips in in every workout. Let's see what happens. Um, no, I mean, mentality's the same going into tomorrow. Uh, I want to win every event. I'm going to give it my all. And, uh, I'm going to sleep well tomorrow night. Yeah. Greg Lacto, RDS in Canada. My question is for Scott. Scott, you've been here a bunch of times at the CrossFit Games. Certainly a big name, top competitor. How does it feel to be amongst the top fittest in the world with your little brother, actually? I've been to the games a number of times. Uh, this year definitely stands out in, in my eyes. It was special having all the athletes coming in from countries all around the world. And you know, one thing I do want to let everybody here know that these athletes put so much time and effort into each and every day. Like we don't just show up and, and do these incredible things. And every one of them is extremely fit. And it's been a lot of fun to share these moments with my brother. This is uh, Paul Bowles with FitEvents.com. This question is for Mr. Castro. So these are all amazing athletes right here, but they all kind of look alike. Um, what are your plans for, or if any plans, to add diversity to the roster? Tomorrow morning, the first event will start at the water at 
10 a.m. The teams and individuals are going to do a water event that will be announced there. Good evening.